Hi, everyone. Hey, Len Quellen from Central Iowa. I'm going to talk to you about uh, bird cake, seed cakes, making them, saving some money. We're all in for saving money, aren't, aren't we? Uh, my wife and I, we've been uh, feeding the birds here in our front and backyard for over 20 years, and it does get expensive. Uh, a lot of cleaning, a lot of maintenance on the feeders, um, and, and it's very expensive. There, there is a lot of waste. Um, I've been turning to seed cakes uh, more frequently now that the winter has come and I, I don't think I'll end up going back to as many feeders as I used to have but uh, seed cakes um, these are a couple of the over-the-counter at retail stores even in, on Amazon Walmart stuff like that that hold the cake and you can either hang these from you know your shepherd's hook or a tree or whatever you, you where you want it and it seems to save on seed money. Um, there's less of a mess underneath the feeder. Um, we all know that the feeders can make a mess on the ground. Um, it, it actually kills the grass below it. Um, we got a lot of moles eventually that would come. And there goes my cat. And uh, it was just a waste. So we, I wanted to turn to something different that the birds don't have to like sparrows and finches and such they don't have to just look for everything that they want to get and throw everything else on the on the ground for waste so anyway th these are the type of feeders you can buy but you can do anything you you could just get some this is just eighth inch dacron line it's very strong it's like a hundred and fifty pound test I can I use them over and over and then I just cut some quarter inch dowel rod so this uh, Dacron goes through the center of the cake, the cylinder cake uh, suet that we're going to make here pretty quick. And then you can just hang this from a tree and the suet cake fits right on here, the cylinder. So there's a lot of different ways you can uh, put it or you can actually just put it on top of a flat feeder or platform feeder. Anyway, our recipe after trying and trying to get it quite right, this holds five cups of seed or five cups of water, pretty much the same. Um, the main ingredient is gelatin. Um, what we found out is if you use one cup of water with two packs of gelatin, we've been using Knox. It's not super cheap. You might be able to find it in bulk in cans or something, but it's averaging about 40 cents a pack. So to make one suet cake in this size is going to cost us with some mis miscellaneous seed on top probably a little you know maybe a buck 20 per seed log so the ingredients is you know one cup water mixed with the gelatin and then you mix it with the seed you use you can also put them in other containers you don't have to buy these you could put it in an old suet container fill it up and then you can put it in like this is just a uh, chocolate almond uh, piece of plastic that's twice as big as this one so you put them in all kinds of different things here's one that I made it was actually in an Oreo box container that I got for Christmas from one of my kids so you can make big seed logs like this which I do have a couple feeders that are this big um, you can use any of your mixed uh, seed that you normally use you can add nuts um, sometimes I add meal worms on this batch that I'm going to do, I put a quarter cup of mealworms in it, and I also put a quarter cup of cranberries. You can put strawberries, cherries, all the birds like those. So I diced up a bunch of cranberries, and here's my seed mix. Now I doubled this recipe, so there's actually 10 cups of seed in here. Um, there's nuts, millet, you know, safflower seeds, a little bit of sunflower seeds, and like I said, mealworms and, and cranberries. So this will be the mix that we use. So I'm going to go ahead and get the water going and we're going to dump this gelatin in and stir this up and pour a couple of these and show you what you need to do next. So stay tuned. Be right back. All right, this is Lynn. We're back. Okay, here comes the important part. Now, we read that you should, this is a double, double recipe, so we're going to use two cups of water. The first cup, this is one cup, eight ounces, is going to be a cooler water. I'm going to put all four packs of gelatin in here. Kind of dusty, eh? Knox, four packages. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stir this. It's supposed to activate it. 
So that's kind of a, a cool liquid. So I'm going to stir this. It's kind of clotting right now. It's getting kind of thick. See? Kind of like cottage cheese, really. And next, I'm going to add... This is hot top tap water. It's not boiled or nothing. It's just warm. Warm, hot tap water. So I'm going to stir all this up. So we got two cups in here of water with four packs of gelatin. So we're going to stir this up. So anyway, I got a whisk and it looks kind of foamy. Kind of like there's dish soap in here, but there's not. It's just the gelatin. And then we're going to pour it in our steel canister here and start mixing it into the seed while it's still kind of warm. Okay, we'll put this aside. I'm going to dump this in our 10 cups of seed while it's still kind of warm. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stir this up so it mixes all the seed in here. And I just got this at Walmart, this kettle. It's like nine bucks or something. It holds a lot, but when you make lard, it kind of comes in handy. It's easy to clean when you're using greasy lard. So anyway, the seeds are getting wet. You want to make sure you get down at the bottom. Stir this up real good. So everything's kind of mixed. Every little piece in here is nice and wet. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to fill these containers. This all looks like it's pretty consistent. I'm going to fill these up to about, I don't know, a half inch to the top, from the top. Now, the dowel rod that I'm pushing in, it's about a 9 inch dowel rod. It's 7 16 in diameter. But some of the uh, feeders that you buy might only be a quarter inch rod, so you might have to use a smaller rod, but most of mine are pretty close to a half inch. So there's one. And if you got left over, just put it in another suet container and you can use it. But we should be, it should come out about right. And yeah, I'm making a mess. Kind of a mess. So we'll get these all spooned in and come back to the next process. And then I did have some extra, but that's all right. We'll save this extra. We can use it like in a platform feeder or something later, but you'll get better as you do it. But here's how much I got left over. Okay, now you can find like a can of tomatoes or you can make something out of wood or whatever. But what you want to do, you don't have a lot of time, but what you're going to do is you're going to smash this down, compress it. So I'm using just some instant coffee that I drink every morning, the container. And what I'm doing is I am pushing pretty hard, compacting all that together so it'll stick. And it's alright if you still have some loose seeds on top and stuff. So those are pushed down pretty good. I'm using all my weight into it, so... Those are pushed down. I'm going to do this little one also. So those look good. Now, here's what I did. I cut dowel rod. This is 7 16 dowel rod, um, which is big enough for the feeders that I use or if I want to put a string through it. So I just go right in the center and I go right down through the bottom of it until I hit the plastic. I'm going to do both of those right now. So I hit the bottom. And I'm going to kind of make sure they're level. Push some of the seed down with my fingers. So that's what it looks like right there, okay? So now what you'll want to do next, very, very important. You want to put both of these in the refrigerator for one hour. Let them set. They'll set up like jello. You know, it'll end up 
getting hard. So put them in there for an hour and then we're going to finish this up. I left the two uh, seed cakes in the refrigerator for a couple hours yesterday and then I took them out and I just left them out in the open air to dry. They're, they're pretty dry. You can also freeze these if you want. Now, come summertime, I don't know how long these will last. I really don't know. I can keep you updated. But I'm going to post another video on how to do lard cakes. So, this is going to be linked to YouTube. You can look under Lynn Quelland, and I'll have a link for this video, which is kind of long, about 10 minutes. But here's what they look like. And I'm going to put this on the pedestal right now on the feeder then I'm going to take it out and get it hung up and see what we can get see if we get some uh, hits on it right away so anyway I, I'm going to tell you the longevity we have a lot of birds and I got about six of these hanging up outside and um We'll see how they do, and um, they usually last about a week or so with all the birds that we have. All right, thanks for watching, and uh, stay tuned for some more videos. Bye-bye. I actually just hung this three minutes ago. A nut hatch landed right away. Now we have a female downy woodpecker. Um, like I said, these cost... I'd say a dollar and a quarter to make and they last about a week and there's no waste the bird picks what he wants eats it right then and there's nothing spilled